Hello and welcome to Arcadia University's BI 327 Histology course. This is part three of the lecture series on cartilage and in this mini lecture we're going to take a look at elastic cartilage and fibrocartilage. Now keep in mind again we're still talking about different types of cartilage so cartilage as a specialized connective tissue uh, but having the same components of a connective tissue. So we're going to have cells, chondrocytes, and in between them, we're going to have an extracellular matrix where we've got fibers and ground substance. We take a look at elastic cartilage. The, the first thing we're going to see is the, the function associated with it. We're going to have a lot more flexible support than what we would have with the hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage, we said, was going to be found in areas like the fetal skeleton, uh, the articular uh, joints, uh, the uh, areas like the cartilaginous rings of the trachea, we got strong support, but it's not overall flexible. We can't kind of twist it around a lot. So it's a little bit more rigid than what we'd have with elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage is gonna be associated with more flexible support. And so the best example of this is that we can take a look at uh, the auricle of the ear, that outer portion of the ear. It's got structure. It uh, it has a form, you can look at it, it's got a shape associated with it, but you can go and tweak it. You can twist it around, you can fold it over, um, don't fold it around too much, uh, it might damage it. But in general, it's it's got the ability to kind of bounce back. And so we're gonna see elastic cartilage in locations where we need to have the support, but it needs to be a little bit more flexible. So the oracle of the ear, we see it in the walls of the external auditory canals and tubes, see it in the epiglottis in, in the back of the mouth, as well as the corniculate and cuneiform cartilages within the larynx. So support, but much more flexible support than we'd see with the hyaline cartilage. We take a look at the characteristics. Uh, it's gonna have a slightly more yellowish appearance um, when it's fresh than uh, the hyaline cartilage. It's also gonna be more flexible than the hyaline cartilage. We can twist it around. When we take a look at it, it's going to be structurally very, very similar to hyaline cartilage. It's going to have type 2 collagen, lots of hyaluronic acid, glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans, all of those things are going to be present there because we still want to have uh, the strength and resiliency associated with it. But in addition to all of those factors, the type 2 collagen, all of those things, elastic cartilage is going to have a very dense network of elastic fibers. So if we think about the characteristics of elastic fibers, like rubber bands, you can stretch them, you can twist them around, and they're going to rebound to their natural shape relatively easily. So if we look at it again with elastic fiber stain, we can see the chondrocytes, but we can see these rubber band-like elastic fibers between them, uh, which would not be found in hyaline cartilage. We take a look at the organization of elastic cartilage. Again, it's going to look like a cartilage matrix, but it's going to have a lot more isogenous groups, many, many more isogenous groups than what you're going to see with hyaline cartilage. So if you see lots of elastic, I'm sorry, lots of um, isogenous groups, and generally we're going to be looking at this with uh, an elastic fiber stain, you see these uh, fiber structures within it. Uh, this is going to be an indication what you're looking at is going to be elastic cartilage. Again, keeping in mind that hyaline cartilage is going to have a nice smooth matrix appearance. You, know, you can see that. Uh, capsular and intercapsular uh, matrix, uh, but overall it's going to have a smooth or glassy appearance to it. Elastic cartilage, when you take a look at it, more isogenous groups and a more fiber staining appearance because you can see those elastic fibers with an elastic fiber stain. Like hyaline cartilage, we're going to have a perichondrium, uh, which is going to be that connective tissue which is going to be surrounding uh, the cartilage mass. The final type of cartilage you're going to take a look at is fibrocartilage. And fibrocartilage is going to start to break some rules um, that we talked about with hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage. Fibrocartilage uh, has type 1 collagen instead of type 2 collagen. Type 2 collagen is a defining characteristic of hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage. Fibrocartilage breaks that rule. Fibrocartilage is going to have very abundant type 1 collagen. And if you look at fibrocartilage, basically what you're going to see is going to be something that looks like a tendon. It's going to be something that looks like a dense, regular connective tissue. And what makes it more difficult is that a fibrocartilage is always going to be associated with a dense connective tissue. And there's not going to be a distinct boundary. You're not going to have this nice, 
perichondrium structure that you can identify as that boundary or transition between the cartilage and the connective tissue. What you're going to see in essence is fibrocartilage is going to be type 1 collagen, like the dense connective tissue outside of it. We're going to have ground substance, which is going to be present there, but it's the, the type 1 collagen that's going to be the main thing that we're going to see in a histological slide. So it's going to look like a tendon. It's going to be surrounded by something that looks like a tendon uh, or a ligament, and you need to be able to identify it. But when we take a look at these cells, what we're going to see is that the cells, the chondrocytes of fibrocartilage are going to be round or oval. And you're not going to see that within a traditional dense connective tissue. In a traditional dense connective tissue, dense regular connective tissue, like a, a tendon or a ligament, the cells are going to be primarily fibroblasts. And we said that the fibroblasts are going to have flattened cells and flattened nuclei. In fibrocartilage, the chondrocytes are going to have rounded cells and rounded nuclei. And there still may the, be the possibility that you can see some isogenous groups. So when you're taking a look at the slides, if you see something that looks like a dense regular connective tissue with flat cells and flat nuclei, what you're looking at is a dense regular connective tissue. If you're looking at something that looks like a dense regular connective tissue with round cells, with round nuclei, and maybe an occasional isogenous group, a, a cluster of uh, cells kind of stacked one, on top of another, really close to one another, chances are what you're looking at is going to be fibrocartilage. So fibrocartilage looks like dense regular connective tissue. Rounded cells and sometimes the rounded cells are going to be stacked into isogenous groups. So if we take a look at this again, it's going to be uh, difficult to determine the difference between fibrocartilage and a dense regular connective tissue, but if you can see the rounded cells, the columnar isogenous groups, uh, that's going to be an indication that you should start thinking about a fibrocartilage. But again, different from hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage because fibrocartilage has these densely packed type 1 collagen bundles and no distinguishable, no distinct perichondrium around the outside. Now, if we think about this, the properties of fibrocartilage are very, very different from the properties of hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage. Both hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage had lots of ground substance, lots of ability to draw water in, and you could basically squeeze it, you could compress it, squeeze the water out, and it would rebound, and like a sponge, draw the water back in. Fibrocartilage does not have that property. Fibrocartilage is going to be very strong, very resistant to deformation. And so what you're going to do is that you're going to see fibrocartilage in areas where we're going to have bone-on-bone -bone connections with very restricted mobility. And so what we're going to look at, uh, we're looking at a region of the vertebral column here, those blue rings indicated by uh, kind of the blue, well, the blue ring uh, or the number six are going to be the annulus fibrosis of the intervertebral disc. We still got a little bit of compression uh, space between the vertebrae, but generally you don't want to squeeze that. and You don't want to twist them around too much. And so it's going to be very strong and anchoring the adjacent uh, vertebrae bones to one another. You can also find uh, fibrocartilage in the symphysis pubis as well as certain bone ligament junctions. And that finishes up our lecture series on cartilage. Uh, the next series we're going to look at another example of specialized skeletal uh, connective tissue. Uh, we'll take a look at bone. So hopefully uh, see you at the next lecture. As always if you have any questions feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Thank you.